Hello there, Ray here. Today we'd like to show you a really cool invention I came up with. This is a brown mushroom. Suspicious stew farm that is infinitely automatic. Suspicious stews are a stew that can be crafted up in survival that will give you special effects. So this is a normal crafting recipe for a mushroom stew. And if you add in different flower types, it will produce different types of suspicious stew, which all first look the same, but have a different NBT tag depending on what type of effect they will give you. So we put a daisy in here, you see it makes a suspicious stew, and this will give you regeneration. Using cornflower, it'll give you jump boost. Using lily of the valley, it'll give you poison. Wither rose will give you the wither effect. Tulips will give you the weakness effect. Azure bluet will give you the blindness effect. Elium will give you the fire resistance. Dandelions or orchids will both give you saturation. And poppies will give you speed. The duration of the effect depends on what type you use. It can range between 11 seconds to three seconds. Now there is a new way you can get suspicious stews in the latest snapshot, and this is if you have a mushroom cow, which will spawn in the mushroom islands. And if a lightning strikes near a red mushroom cow, I'll summon in right now, you hear that audio effect as well as you see the visuals, this cow that was red got converted over into a brown mushroom. Now this is a completely different mob, and these brown mushrooms were a joke by Cory during the Minecon event, where he jokingly said that he wanted brown mushrooms into the game. And Cory has been tweeting out saying that there has been a secret mob added being the brown mushroom, and that it has some secret effects. And people have been tweeting back different stuff they discovered, such as you can get a brown mushroom by converting a red one by having lightning strike it. And one of the secrets that the brown mushroom has is that he'll eat flowers. So let's go ahead and feed him one. You see it puts off a little bit of particles, it also crunched on the flower. And now we can go ahead and actually grab some soup from him. So normally if you would grab soup from a red mushroom or a brown mushroom, they both produce the mushroom soup. But now since he ate a flower, we can go ahead and right click on him, and you see we now got a suspicious stew. Now this suspicious stew will give us the same effect as the flower that we fed him. So we fed this guy a corn flower, so if we go ahead and eat this suspicious stew, you'll see that it gives us the jump boost. So we got the jump boost for about five seconds. You also notice it helped some of our hunger. Now if we go ahead and try to get some more out of him, you'll see that we'll just get normal mushroom soup. So we actually have to go ahead and feed him another flower to get another bowl of stew. Let's go ahead and feed him a dandelion. This will give us saturation. Now the saturation indicator is missing still. Now there is this long time glitch to do with mushroom cows and their mushrooms on top of them. If you kind of see once in a while, they look like the very tops are expanding much larger. You kind of see right here, see how long this is right here? This is just a visual glitch and it has to do with these little mushrooms on top. And I really wish that they would fix that because it's been like that like forever. Now if a brown mushroom is hit by lightning again, it will convert back over into a red one. So you can see that here. Now the actual noise that is produced when the lightning strikes them reminds me of like when an alien spaceship comes over and zaps up somebody or like zaps up a cow and does experiments in their spaceship and then brings the cow back down. Let's listen to that again. And it probably has a reference to some movie. So using these new mechanics that they just came out with, I went ahead and designed this crazy farm over here. This farm, once it started, can farm up suspicious stews for an infinite amount of time while being automatic. And that's what the term infinitely automatic means, meaning that once you have started up, it will go on for an infinite amount of time without anything having to be changed. Like most complex things, it can be broken down into smaller, more easily understood parts. So in the center of the whole contraption, we have the brown mushroom cow, which is sitting here in his pen. Now to get the suspicious stews, we need to have a flower type as well as a empty bowl. So the way that I get a flowers automatically is that over here I have a flower farm. So this consists of a large platform of green grass blocks and in the center here we have a dispenser that's pointing downwards with some bone melon. So let's start this farm and see how it operates. So if we go over here and just start this farm up. You can see how the pistons are pushing the blocks back and forth and what we got here in the center is a dispenser and every time the blocks move to one side, it's going to power these pistons as well as also power this dispenser here. And this dispenser will be dispensing bone mill onto the grass blocks. And this is normally produced grass, which would be broken off. But in this very recent snapshot, 08B, they actually broke dispensers so they cannot dispense bone mill directly onto the blocks. And I wrote a bug report on this and they confirmed that they will fix this. It most likely was accidentally broken due to they made some changes to do with tile entities, trying to avoid some crashes from the previous snapshot. 
But what the dispenser would do is similar to what I'm doing here, it's just place bone meal around this dispenser, and this would produce different types of plants to grow in the area. Now you can see that we're getting some grass as well as some flower types, and what you want to do is build this in a flower forest. Now the flower forest will actually produce almost every single type of flower variation in one biome. So the only ones you won't be able to get is the wither rose as well as the orchid. So you can see we're getting quite a few flowers as well as some wheat seeds. Now underneath we have some hopper minecarts which will pick up the items and then put them into some unloading stations here which will put them into some chest here. And I also got some chests over here as well. Now unfortunately as the guys showed you in the last video they also broke hopper minecarts in this most recent snapshot as you see this guy. They're unable to go around curved rails. Uh, they also confirmed that is a bug and they will be fixing that too. Then the hopper minecarts would normally come over to the unloading station and unload the flowers into this chest here. What we have underneath this chest is a item sorter. So this item sorter here is currently pulling out this type of flower, the azure bluette. Then we just have some hopper pipelines which are taking it over here to our little farm setup. Now you may be wondering to keep this whole operation going, how is this farm going to constantly be producing bone meal? You might see right here we got a composter and above the composter we actually have a cactus farm. So you could come in and put in a normal cactus farm, but this cactus farm is a special cactus farm. I turned it on so you can see it operating. So this one was actually built up by Techman88, and it uses a concept that was discovered by Toast Redstoner as well as Cheater Codes, where you can update the blocks near a cactus, and it will cause the cactus to try to grow. They're very similar to what we see with the Chorus Fruit Farms. And then the idea was later improved by Cyriel. And Techman took that and he made this really efficient design here, which is updating all these different cactuses around here. Works really nice, you can see them all popping off. And what's going on inside is that we got some pistons here which are being zero ticked, and they're updating the cactuses, making them want to grow. And there's a little bit of redstone underneath here, and as well as a clock. Now there is quite a few updates happening, so it's kind of laggy in that sense. So if you don't like something like this, you can always go in with just a normal cactus farm. And the cactuses are falling into the water and being collected by hoppers, and then we're taking them down all the way to our composter, which is converting them into bone meal, and we're using that bone meal on our flower farm. So now we got our flowers, which is one of the two ingredients which we need. So now the only thing we need is some empty bowls. So if you guys don't know, you can actually get empty bowls from AFK Fishing, and one of the junk items you get from fishing is empty bowls. When you do go fishing, there is an 85% chance that you'll catch a fish, a 10% chance that you'll catch junk, and only a 5% chance that you'll catch treasure. But since we're actually going after bowls, which are considered junk, we actually want to keep our chances of getting junk as high as possible. So I went ahead and enchanted up this fishing rod. So we got the unbreaking as well as the mending, allowing you to be able to AFK and it will repair itself. And unbreaking allows it to last longer per repair. I also put lure 3 on, which decreases the time it takes the fish to strike by 5 seconds each level. But notice I did not put the enchantment luck of the sea on there, because that will decrease the chance of us getting the junk loot. And since the wooden bowls are in this category, we want to have the highest chance of getting them. Now all you have to do is AFK at an AFK fish farm. Um, I just made this one up really quickly. It's pretty nice because you got the waterlogged blocks, so I got the fence directly inside the water. And then I also have like the note block. You just need any block that's when the player can right click on it, he can't throw the rod off. So you can use like a note block, or I think you can also use like a sign, you know how you can right click on signs without actually being able to place blocks up against them. You probably can use other blocks that move, such as fence gates, so they can keep clattering. Uh, I like note blocks because when you right click them, you also increase your score. Now they used to have a score here that was to do with note blocks that you tuned. But it seems that they have removed it, and now they just have note blocks played. I know like on the Protect server, I have like half a million uh, note blocks tuned. And that's from AFK Fishing, because when you fish, you guys will be right clicking on this, waiting for the fish to come up. And this is considered tuning, but then if you do the left click, like this, this is considered playing. So it's unfortunate that they have removed that statistic. But the way that AFK fishing works is essentially what you want to do is you want to have your player first be able to throw at something that will stay solid. So it can be any block they can normally throw at. And then shortly after you want it, the player to be able to click on something that is going to allow him to constantly right click without him being able to pull in the rod. So what I got here is a pressure plate and when you get an entity inside the pressure plate, you know how it goes down. So it's going to go low enough so that my player will be able to then click on the note block which is behind it. So if I aim right between 
the pressure plate and the note block. And I want to make sure that when I click, I'm actually putting the bobber into the water. So I'm going off to the side a little bit. And if you go ahead and right click, your guy will throw the bobber at the pressure plate when it's up. And when the bobber comes in contact with the pressure plate, it'll cause it to shrink downwards, which will make the hitbox smaller allowing the player to then click on the note block behind it. Then what happens when a fish bites onto the bobber and pulls it down, it's going to make it so that the entity is no longer in contact with the pressure plate, allowing the pressure plate to come back up, allowing the player to click onto the pressure plate with his rod, allowing you to reel in it. This will pull in the fish or whatever you have on your line. Now notice right when I do grab something and it comes flying, what happens is that the hoppers are underneath immediately pick up the item. That way you don't have to worry about filling up inventory with them. Now there's a lot of fish farms out there, so you can use whatever design you want to, um, or you can make your own like I did here. The concepts are all pretty much exactly the same. And underneath here we got a couple hoppers, and normally the loot go over here into this chest, but we also got a item filter here, which is gonna pull out any of the bowls. Then it's gonna pipe it over into our farm. So I got some bowl storage over here. So now we got the three main ingredients. We got the mushroom cow, which is brown. We also got a flower type as well as an empty bowl. So this little device allows us to automate the whole system with the player being AVFK. So now we need to feed the brown mushroom a flower and then right click on him with a bowl. So the way that I overcome this problem is by using the priority the player uses with his hands. So if he has something in his offhand, he'll always use that second to his main hand. So if I have the flowers in my main hand, he will always try to use my flowers first, then the empty bowl. Now luckily the cow isn't very hungry and he won't constantly be eating your flowers. So once you right click on him, he'll just take in one flower and then he'll have that potion effect ready for him to produce for a short period of time. And then after that time elapsed, then he'll actually be able to take another flower. Or if you go ahead and get some suspicious stew out of him, then he'll be able to take another flower. So with that in mind, I have this nifty redstone set up here, which will help me automate the whole system. I just got an on and off switch right here. And when I flick this, it's just going to put clocks on either of these droppers, which will start handing me items. And it's also gonna activate this trap door. So let's go ahead and turn it on. And then all I have to do is right click on the mushroom. And you can see that it's dispensing items, keeping both my off hand as well as my main hand full of items. Now if the off hand does deplete where the items, it's not gonna be able to put more items into the offhand, and then that slot won't be able to be used anymore. Also notice I have a trap door coming in front of my face, that way I'm not constantly spamming through all my resources extremely fast. Let's go ahead and turn this off and take a look at what's going on. So what I got over here is just a clock that is going to this dropper. I also have a safety device, which if it runs out of ingredients, it's just going to do the same thing as the switch. It's going to power it and it's going to shut it all down. On the same side, it's pretty much mirrored. I got a clock that is dropping out the bowls. I also have some of the wiring coming up here and just turning this trapdoor on and off. That way every time I'm given one of each ingredient, I'm also given access to the cow to use up those ingredients. That way my inventory doesn't completely fill up or I don't completely run out of stuff in my inventory either. Underneath the mushroom cow, I just have some hoppers here, which as you guys see, as soon as I produce the stews, I don't have any inventory room in my inventory and it automatically gets dropped out. And then these hoppers will pick them up and just put them down here into this chest. And because Suspicious Stew does not stack, you want to make sure you have a lot of storage because it can easily fill up very quickly. And that's how you make an infinitely automatic Suspicious Stew farm. One of the most interesting items in the game as the bowls all look the same, but it can contain whatever type of effect that it was made with. So you don't know if you can get a good effect or a bad effect unless you craft it up yourself. Definitely a cool item to use in a prank or even some type of minigame setup. And the wide range of different effects that you can get from these Suspicious Stews make them somewhat useful. And you can easily go ahead and switch out whatever flower type you have over here with a different flower type and then produce a different type of stew. And if you're going for the how do we get here advancement, which is advancement where you need to have every single type of potion effect onto the player at the same time. With these new suspicious stews added to the game, they also added in two new potion effects which previously weren't obtainable in survival. These are the blindness effect as well as a saturation. And currently the only way you can get those now is through suspicious stews. Now you guys might know that the illusioner mob also gives you the blindness effect, but currently that mob isn't introduced into survival. And one of the reasons they say they did not introduce that mob is because they thought the blindness effect that came from the loser would make getting the advancement too hard for most players. So hopefully now that they have another way of getting the blindness effect in survival without having to use the illusioner, 
They will also introduce Illusionary into the game. I know a lot of you guys are really excited to see some of these unused mobs being added into the game, such as the Illusionary, the Killer Rabbit, and the Zombie Horse. And they said they will add these mobs into the game if they can kind of find a way to introduce them that kind of makes sense and is unique. So if you guys have any ideas on how to introduce those type of mobs, please sure to voice your ideas down in the comments. Now, one of the most useful suspicious dudes that I think which is good for survival is the saturation one, as that one can increase your saturation, which is essentially a bar that is very similar to that of like the hunger bar, except it's not shown on the screen. And the way the game works is at first it'll sap through all your saturation, and then it'll start sapping through your hunger. So by eating suspicious stew that give you saturation, it will always keep your saturation bar full, therefore your hunger will always stay full, and you can constantly keep sprinting. One of the downsides to having the suspicious dudes be packed away into a chest like this is that it's pretty bulky to carry around these items since they do not stack. So the alternative method is something I talked about in some of the snapshot videos which is coming up with a nice mushroom farm which is designed by one of the Protec members KK and tweaked a little bit by some of the other Protec members. And this is actually built up on the Protec server. It allows you to harvest mushrooms very efficiently. You essentially put the parent mushrooms in here we have to make sure that they have low light levels, otherwise they won't be able to be planted, such as this block here. This is why we built our farm up in the end dimension. And then when the parents put the offspring mushrooms over here, they'll pull back the pistons and drop them downwards and get collected here. So the advantage of having the actual mushrooms instead of the brown mushroom cow is that the ingredients will only take up four slots. So you can see I got both mushrooms, the bowl, as well as the flower source. And then whenever you want to have one of these special effects, you can go ahead and put these into your little crafting grid here and craft yourself one. Then you can eat it and you can get that saturation effect. Then you can go ahead and just put the empty bowl back with the other ones. Then you just return to having four slots being filled up. That way you don't have to lug around large amounts of suspicious dudes already crafted. Now there is no recipe for these guys because they use NBT tags, similar to like banners. So you can't just like one click craft them, but you can go over here and like click on the stew here. Then you can come in and put in your flower type. That will create the suspicious stew of your liking. Now I did space out these farms just for demonstration so they're not too clogged together, but you can always put these closer. That way you're not using so many hoppers and having them be exposed. You can always put some droppers on top of those as well. And same goes for the cactus farm. You can put it directly above your grass farm here. And if you would like to learn more about this cactus farm here, Techman actually did quite a few different designs and you can find those on his channel which I'll link down in the description. Now this setup here does take two players as one player would be over here and one player would be over here to be officially infinitely automatic, meaning that the player wouldn't have to stop doing one thing to go do the other. But it's possible to make this one player thing as well since you can take items out of the player's hands so if the player is working over here, you can actually take the flowers out of his hand by using a item frame. And then you can use a renewable source like eggs to actually break that item out of it. Very similar to the device I invented that allows you to mend large amounts of items all at once while being AFK. I'll put the link to that down below as well. And essentially what that does is free up the player's hand so that he can be given the fishing rod. Then he can be put in front of an AFK fishing thing like this. And since both farms use just the right click button, which can be held down by putting weights on your keyboard with the mouse reassigned or just like taping down your mouse, it is actually possible. And as you guys know, I really enjoyed making these infinitely automatic farms where I can just put the player into his little spot, allow him to AFK for as long as he wants. And this is actually one of the goals that we are striving for on the Protect server, building up a bunch of collections of farms so we can AFK with our players and allowing all this crazy stuff to be automated by itself. So I can't wait until we upgrade the server into 1.14 and I can actually build this up for real. If you're curious about all the crazy accomplishments that we did do on the Protect server so far, I have made a playlist that goes through all the episodes. You might think that these type of farms are pretty outlandish, but I have been playing Minecraft for almost going on 10 years. So I have went ahead and designed up all the basic farms that you typically would think to farm up. And I don't find those challenging to do anymore. So I'm always looking for a new challenge that allow me to even automate more stuff in our survival world. And this is one of the things that just really excites me about Minecraft, being able to just automate almost anything that you've set your mind to. And it's probably one of the only reasons why I've been playing Minecraft for almost 10 years. An infinitely automatic way to use the brown mushroom crowds to make a suspicious stew farm. Don't forget guys, we will be streaming at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So come join us for the fun there. If you guys would like to check out this world, I have put the world download down in the description. And if you guys did find this video interesting, 
leave a like, be sure to share this video. And if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications. And I'd love to hear what you guys think about this farm as well as how they should introduce other mobs into the game of Minecraft. Bye bye